This is what happens when you change my body type. Oh if I feel it's something, <laughs> at least I know what it will tell you where it is, what kind of want. So, yeah. I'm really bad with word, word um, rules, not signs, rules and Documentation type of thing. I'm really bad with them. So bad. So so bad. Right. These are incredibly simple. Most road signs you can work out with them. If you have a circle with a red border, that's an order. So you look at what's inside that, you look at the shape, and you can usually work out what it is. The two level crossings make up 10 and 11. So you, the level crossing without barrier is nice and easy. You remember, it's just a cross. So if you recognise that as a level crossing, to the last one, we've got the with flow cycle lane. So that means that instead of the contra flow, it's actually flowing in the same direction. So the bicycles and the cars are going in the same direction in that lane. Next one, this is actually very poorly done. Two-way traffic crosses a one-way road. Perhaps you're looking at the side and going, I don't really see what that means. So let's draw it out. So you've got two one-way streets, and then you've got a two-way street crossing over that. So that's what that sign is warning you of. Similarly, you've got two-way traffic ahead. So say you're going along a one-way street, and then you came across a two-way road in front of you. That is what that sign is warning. Wait, what? Sim crossing over. This is the cars are going in the same direction in that lane. Next one, this is actually very poorly done. Two-way traffic crosses a one-way road. Perhaps you're looking at the side and going, I don't really see what that means, so let's draw it out. So you've got two one-way streets, and then you've got a two-way street crossing over that. So that's what that sign is warning you of. Similarly, you've got two-way traffic ahead, so say you're going along a one-way street, two-way street crossing over that. So that's what that sign is warning you of. Similarly, you've got two-way traffic ahead, so say you're going along a one-way street, and then you came across a two-way road in front of you. That is what that sign is warning you to anticipate. Moving on to number seven. Oh my god, guys. Oh my god. I went to do my driving test, and I passed. Do you know how happy I am? A pass is a pass, a win is a win because I literally got for the three on the door. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nadia Naomi, if you didn't know already, and if it's the first time on my channel, welcome to my channel. And on this channel, I talk about I just the lifestyle vlogs and I'm trying to change my niche so. Yeah, and I'm trying different things, so I'm still trying to find my niche. So, um, welcome to my channel and um, going on this journey with me together on YouTube. And today, I'm doing a video on how I pass my car theory test in four hours. So, I studied for four hours and I passed my theory test just about, okay, but I still passed, so I went in the way, so yeah. So I am doing this video on how I passed my driving, uh, my my car theory test in four hours. And obviously, first of all, I kind of like beat myself up about it. Not really like panic. I did something really stupid, really dumb. This is what happens when you change my body time. The night before I panicked and um, this video is people that work well under pressure. If you're someone who works well under pressure, this is the perfect video for you. If you're someone who, like me, procrastinating and you left it till last minute. When I mean last minute, night before your test, you know what I mean? Um, this video is for you, okay? If I'm looking down, I've made some notes right here and I don't want to miss out any point. So here's the reason I'm gonna be looking down at my note, okay? But we're gonna talk about about the test. So the driving theory test is made up of two parts. So you have the hazard perception part, and then you have the multiple choice question part. So the multiple choice question part 
is of two parts as well so you have the like objective ones where you get obviously all of them you have multiple choices but like towards the end i think the last three or five or so i can't remember instead of like just questions you're gonna have videos you're gonna watch the videos and then they will ask you questions about it the cyclist wants to go around the roundabout and is flagging left but then they start turning right those are multiple choice questions you know how much room space should you leave or sometimes when it's like saying oh you you want to park uh, on the hill you know which side should you face down the hill or up the hill those are multiple choice questions but when it comes to the video part you will watch a video and they will tell you what was wrong with the video or was the correct way that the driver or whoever in the video did wrong that they could have done right basically is what the video and the multiple choice questions kind of like go towards it's multiple choice questions you need about for three to pass a 50 question so there's like 50 questions and you need to at least 43 to pass now there has a perception it's just made up of 14 videos and then you have to click on those videos for any kind of upcoming hazard or any potential hazard personally i still click on potential hazard and some of the questions there's two hazards that's gonna be on it instead of one but obviously in one question in one video you can get five points down to one so like when the hazard is coming up you, ob you observe properly you see the hazard coming up then you click you know you get five up to when the hazard happens so you can get like one point for that one so sometimes you could get two double points in one video basically so those, it will tell you when there's a question that has put two hazard in that video and then when you're doing your hazard perception when you're doing the test in general there's this extra three minutes after your multiple choice question where you can choose to take or not before you go to your hazard so sometimes you just like to cool yourself down for the next part of the test which i used actually so now we're gonna go on how i pass my test so first of all what happened was the night before it's a funny so the night before i realized oh my god i have sherry test to do tomorrow which my test luckily was at 1 pm right cool it was at 1 pm and i was like oh my god i have test tomorrow i don't know why i didn't think because you can't cancel it or change the date the night before you need at least 72 hours before you do that less than 24 hours i'm trying to cancel like make it make sense that yeah but i tried to cancel it and i couldn't like change the date and i needed my provisional license card because i was at work that night and I didn't have my card to change it, the date. I was like, oh, oh well. So I came home, I was like, oh, when I come home, it's on my vlog. When I come home, I'm gonna change the date in the morning. And I'm, now I'm thinking about it, like, why did I even think of that? Like, trying to cancel, change the date on the day, it makes no sense. Then I wallow in self pity a little bit, you know. I didn't really panic, panic. You can say I did. But I was like, oh my God, I have tears, what am I gonna do? So I made up my mind, I was like, you know what? It's gonna be part of experience if I fail or not. At least I know what I'm going in there for. As if I didn't know, because I've done this test before. Um, when I turned 20 or 24? 20? I think. I did the test now and I passed the first time I passed. And then COVID came. I started doing my driving lessons first, so I can't drive. I can't drive, but I then covid came and then it expired so i was like oh god what am i gonna do and then when i was in uni i think like my last year which was earlier this year actually i tried doing it again so i didn't study i just felt like yo oh i've done it before so it's not a big deal i just did like two weeks studying or whatever when i failed i got like 30 something and 30 something out of 50 Second time I got 38, third time I got one point just to pass. And I was like, what is this? And I was so mad at myself. I was like, I'm not doing this again. I am not doing it again. And then um, one day I was just, I just had so much going on when it comes to tra transport. I went out and transport was just rubbish. And I was like, I have to do my driving. So that was what motivated me basically. And the place I live, if you don't drive, things will not be that easy for you. So that motivated me. So I booked it. I'm mind you, I'm working, I'm on placement. Okay. So I did it, I booked the test. So while I was on placement, I would study a little bit like when my placement was like 
three weeks or two weeks left my placement I started doing study I might study like two or three times a week I won't lie when I'm home I don't study at all when I'm at work nope even on the train nope I didn't study so I what do you call it I got on the when I got to placement I was studying and everything and then like a week or so towards the end of my placement I just forgot about it I stopped studying and then two weeks later and then Two weeks later, after my placement, I was still remember like, oh my god, I've got a test. I can't remember. I've got a test. I need to study. I need to study. But I don't. I don't study. So now, that night, I was like, oh my god. I looked at the day. I was doing something on my phone. I was telling the day. I was like, oh my god. My test is tomorrow at 1pm. What am I going to do? I haven't studied properly. So now, this is what I did. So I went on YouTube and I found some videos. So I knew what my weak point is when it comes to like the theory test. So first of all, I downloaded the Theory 4-in-1 um, app and I did mock tests and I seen where my weak point is which is road signs and documents and rules of road. So I went on that app, you can literally practice questions only on those of your weak points, those topics that are your weak points. So I practiced those ones. Then I went on YouTube as well, first found a, found a video of a video that just talks about the 63 road signs and I was just listening to it. The video is in like less than five minutes the video and it just take in easily. Funny thing, nothing about zebra crossing came up on my test. I'm not saying it's not gonna come up on your test, but on my test it didn't come up. So like those little things that is like common sense, like if you really like oh, this is easy. Just just move on. Just do the mock, find where it is that your weak point is, go on the app, click on those um, topics only and then do a practice questions on those ones. That's it. And then so I watched the videos again, after I did my boxes, I seen my weak points, I watched the videos again, I watched another one which was very explanatory as well, I watched two videos and I went to do the mark again and I got like 38, 41, I was like okay I got this, let me tell you I did not pass on the mock test, I did not pass on the app, but I was like okay I got this, I know what it is, when this, when is this question, I know what the answer is, you know what I mean, so I, I didn't really pass on the mock question on the app but you know when you know where your point is and that's where you practice more so i kept doing that kept doing that for the next four hours so those are what i did and then i went for my test so i'm on my way to my test is at one it's 12 half 12 and i'm on my way to do my test now so I'm not even trying to like get my hopes too uh, too high because what I went to, I'll tell you the story after when I get home because I've done it a couple times and I failed and I think I kept the paper, I'll show you guys but yeah, see you guys later, tell you It was nerve wracking, I was nervous but then I was like a bit chilled like you know it is what it is if I pass now, if I don't pass mm, it is what it is and now the hazard perception, hazard perception I did not study nothing <laughs> For the first time I did it, did not the first time I did my test, I did not know about hazard perception. I found out about hazard perception a day prior to my test. The very first time I did my theory test that I passed. So I just watched videos about hazard perception, people explaining what it is, basically. So I kind of grasped that easily because I'm a very visual person, just from watching something or if someone's saying something to me, I just absorb it easily. So with hazard perception, all I, all you need to know is when you see a potential hazard, most times there's a lot of potential hazards like you might see pedestrian walking, don't click like that. But you know, especially keep your eyes on like when there's like a junction, like when there's a corner road on the road in the videos, like keep an eye out because something might be coming out or emerging out of that junction. So like those type are those are the type of places you wanna be looking for into when you want to click for any kind of um, upcoming hazard. So a pedestrian will be running out, sometimes a football will run out into the road, you have to click when you see that, or your child might run out into the road, or someone, or you're passing and then a van person is opening the door, you click on that. There was one in one of my videos where the van and the guy, he was already standing by the driver's place, like outside, and opening the van, and obviously the car out was, it's kind of like you're in the car and then you're trying to find out the hazard. And then suddenly he just carried some boxes out and literally crossed the road. So that's like a proper um, upcoming hazard. So I click like three times, but not in a row. Be mindful about how many times you click. For some reason, I click just seven times and I move on, but not seven, like one, two, three, five, six, seven. 
seven one and then it waits a couple of seconds and then click again like from what you can observe in the video basically that's how much you click but i try not to click more than six or seven times in one video i hope that helps because that's what um that's what worked for me myself basically so that's what i did for hazard perception i didn't really do much i passed my hazard perception i have my test i have my results actually yeah this is my results um so i got for the 300 dots out of 50 for the multiple choice question part so to be honest like i said i did not pass in the app or the mock test but what i knew what i've studied i just felt like you know what it's enough if that makes sense i don't really have to pass on the app but you know everyone's different someone some people might feel like i feel ready after i'm able to do the app and i pass so then in the hazard perception out of the pass mark is 44 but i go for seven out of 75 and now i was said like my multiple choice question the topic area most of all the questions i got one wrong on each question so again stuff like this can happen sometimes you might not get anything wrong so it's up to you smart if i you know what i mean but on the roots of the road like i said it's my weak points i got two questions wrong but the rest of them i got one wrong and then my hazard perception i scored five points on two clips four points on three clips three points on five clips one point on two clips and zero points on one clip so that one i don't know what happened there maybe i didn't see any hazard but i click on every video and if whenever you over click there's a message that comes up and said you over clicked so you will not get any points for that video so you need to be mindful thinking about how much you click you need to be mindful as well about like whenever i'm unsure i was unsure about any questions i will flag it i will choose my answer but i will flag it and then at the end of the test it tells you like it shows you an overview about all your questions that you've answered you've not answered the ones you've flagged and then you can always click on it and then read the questions again and and choose the right answer that you see fit that you see like okay this could be the correct answer okay so that's how i passed my test guys and to be honest i was so i was because those three times that i did it i almost cried like i was fuming and this one i was like i was so scared to open the paper like what if i didn't pass i did not try to like not that i'm trying to limit myself or anything but i just like you know what if i fail it is what it is although my money didn't waste at least my money didn't waste that's what i thought and if i pass oh well i'm good so um well i passed so i'm happy about that so i hope this video helps because that's how i passed in four hours guys and those four hours i was not literally like hardcore i was walking around the house i even did my cabinet it's in my vlog i was putting my cabinets together i went to have breakfast i had a nice shower i was doing whatever while studying or like listening to the video so like it's a video where i was listening to it as if it was radio but obviously you still have to look at it because it's showing you the road signs and saying what they are so um yeah i hope this video was very helpful i hope it helped you a lot because it did this is what works for me so i hope it works for you as well so um i'll see you in my next video and give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to comment if you like this video and tell me if you pass your test using this technique that i use as well and yeah thank you so much for watching my video bye